Hi guys to everyone, it's my really pleasure today to have with us an old friend. Welcome back home, James and Reaper, how are you? Hello, thank you very much. Yeah, third time. Yeah, I'm yeah. doing very well and thank you for yeah the interest in having me on again. I mean, yeah. how <laughs> couldn't, how couldn't you became, like I would say, like a, one big event in all the Europe. You're, I mean, you started from scratch and now you're ruling almost the, the, the continent. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't go that far, but yeah, we've been doing a lot of uh, yeah. stuff this past year or two or since the last time we spoke, whenever that was, it was before the last album. Yeah. So it's been a while. Yeah. Time's passed. Because, Time's gone quick. Yeah. <laughs> and we are getting older. I mean, we are growing up. Let's say they put in that. Mm. We're growing up. Because you toured a lot, really a lot. I don't know how many tours you have and you're having and you will have. Yeah. <laughs> I think a Reaper is like a project that you have to experience live, I should say. Because that's yeah. what I'm seeing. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, I'm glad people think that. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, I try and, of course, we try and do our best live. Um, and it's good to hear people enjoy the shows. Yeah. We have toured a lot. Not, I mean, compared to a lot of bands, we haven't toured much. But compared to our usual schedule, we've yeah. toured a lot over the past, um, yeah. however long, since like 2022 or something. You know, we yeah. first, we'd done our first tour of, uh, well, our first uh, long tour of Europe with Spectral Wound, and then we released the album, yeah. played a whole bunch of shows, came, went back to Europe in summer, then we done the tour with Abbott and Toxic yeah. Holocaust in uh, just earlier this month. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's been a lot and loads of festivals and stuff. It's been, yeah, it's been a busy time and, yeah, I don't know where the times went. It's been very, it's been very fun, you know? Yeah, it's been, it's been amazing. Yeah, but did you have any time about thinking about releasing a new material? Like, there, there, there's this, uh, let's say, this kind of hair all around a little bit, like some, like you're watching yeah, always. something. Of course, okay. Yeah, always. Yeah, I've got, um, I think, I was working on something earlier today. I've got about, um, at the moment, it's like 10 or 11 songs that are kind of halfway okay. done. But that means nothing because I, yeah. I, take, I take ages to do things and... I get annoyed and I delete things and I <laughs> start again and stuff like that. So at the moment, pro progress is going well. Um, yeah. But that could that could change at any point, you know. Um, but yeah, the stuff that I've got, I'm very happy with. Yeah. It's sounding quite cool. Um, right now, we have a you. You are in the good mood to keep this song. Yeah. Yeah. Right now, I think I think the stuff I've got is good. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it'll be something I keep building on, and yeah, I mean, yeah. Now I've got like two or. Th two months or something before we kind of go back into more live shows and stuff where yeah. it will be you know so right now is kind of my break where i can work on music write and write and record and, yeah work yeah. on music and so it's like the, yeah. creative, the creative process or whatever. yeah i mean that's my favorite part of everything so yeah. it's cool to do these tours and stuff like that and then get back and yeah uh work on music which yeah is my favorite thing to do so it's it's cool to like you know a lot of people like they don't they don't want to come back from tour or whatever they want to keep touring and stuff but i like i mean both i think I, yeah when i come back from a cool yeah. tour i go back into just doing what i like doing um so it, yeah it's really cool um and yeah because, yeah because I no idea from the tour you can, you can have as well like of course with being a, you know band fans and everything it's always a source of influence for you mm. before the music i don't know just it's a kind of growth as well so, yeah i guess so yeah, yeah. Probably subconsciously, you know, you yeah. you you hear. Um, I don't. Know, I mean, yeah, I don't know. You know, li listening to. I mean, yeah, bands I like Toxic Holocaust are, of course, uh, were are a massive influence on me anyway. So, yeah. but yeah, hearing like bands like for a month straight, and then yeah. you know, playing our own songs and seeing how people react. Um, insanely, so probably, insanely, yeah, to your stage, yeah. insanely. Yeah, there's probably some sort of subconscious influence there, you know. Um, I think, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I just try and write a good song and yeah. <laughs> see and yeah, but, if so, it's good. Yeah. But you, you mentioned that you're going on a tour in a couple of months. Mm -hmm. So what about this tour? I mean, for what you can say, but I think it's already announced. Full, full uh, announced. So we've got, we, we've got a whole bunch of dates like announced kind of, but not the tour. 
Okay, okay. But so what? So let's say what is confirmed already. I mean, um, like, I, don't know. I can't even remember what's been announced. I know we're 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 playing a few festivals like Party okay. Sun, Bloodstock, Vakin. Okay, um, well, all around the, the Europe again, all the festivals. Yeah, yeah we're yeah. it'll be a European tour. Yeah, yeah, European tour. Um, okay. um, and yeah, Bloodstock in the UK. Yeah, but yeah, we're gonna be. We just announced a show today, actually, with um, Cloak and High Command. Okay. Um, and we're going to be doing a few shows around Europe with those guys. Um, I think there is a show in Italy as well. Um, yes, yes, we were. I can't, I can't remember if we've been announced. But yeah, we've announced. Yeah, yeah, I read that. I read that because it's not yeah. media. It's in Tor Torino. I think. Yeah, we've got a Torino. Um, August. Yeah. And uh, Frantic August Fest. Yeah. Yeah. We've got Frantic Fest and yeah, one with Left to Die in Torino. Yeah, Left to Die. Like, but that's the, yeah. an amazing gig. And I'm, I'm, I was looking to just, uh, you know, yeah. to book yeah, and going there there. and come in there because it's Torino. You will have such an big inspiration from the city. It's yeah. not esoteric. It's one of the most esoteric cities in Italy. It's beautiful. If you have hope, time, yeah. go to it. Yeah, it's one of the in the north. It's the one of the best. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You, we, I hope to be able to visit and stuff. Usually, when we're, yeah. we're, I, we usually, I mean, with this last tour, like with Abbott and Toxic, yeah. we, I, I don't know if I managed to like see any city really at all. Um, yeah, <laughs> um, maybe, maybe three or four, you know, when the drives were shorter and stuff like that. But yeah, basically, it's it, usually how things go unless we have a day off. Yeah, um, it, it, usually it's just drive to the venue, oh, set up. Yeah. Play the show, hotel, yeah, and then repeat the if next you have day. The time to go to the hotel because you have to, if you have to cross some border, or if you are like the next day showing a com like eight hours from your driving all night, like being all night on the bus. Uh, no, no, we weren't on a bus. Uh, we were in the van this time. The other ah. the other bands were on the bus, but uh, yeah, we were in the van, so we stayed in hotels. We kind of planned. Yeah. You know, yeah, so you rested a little bit, at least. Yeah, planned planned all like the logistics and stuff. You know, if it's a really long drive, then we kind yeah. of drive a little bit through the night and stay at a hotel, kind of um, near uh, the venue. Like, like the venue. Uh, yeah, just kind of drive towards the venue and stay yeah. somewhere. Um, but yeah. yeah, yeah, I mean, the yeah, it's nice to visit places, and it's yeah, you know, when we can. But uh, yeah, unfortunately. Come on, like, like next time and yeah. like, when you are in Torino, because I love, love, like Torino, and uh, I'm gonna bring you some Sicilian dessert or something to oh. drink, uh, from Sicily, like for example, Thank you very much. I don't have to drink wine or something. Um, I'm not a wine drinker. Dessert's great for me. <laughs> so, you don't drink a lot, so dessert is better than 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 drink. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Okay, I love so desserts. so let's say <laughs> let's say let's take away drink and scotch and something like that. Let's take away wine. So. So I'm gonna bring you the Italian, the Sicilian cannoli then. No, I will remember much. that. Yeah, it's like it will be like a fucking you know, can imagine that change the log of Podge and Rock cannoli rock with fucking <laughs> like the Godfather version of the uh, web. <laughs> yeah, but that's like uh, we were saying. Mean, we did the basically the first interview we really were like in twenty twenty one and twenty twenty two. So we left out one album. We speak about we spoke about coagulate in darkness. The Fire of Poisons, but it, they were already released uh, by one. Yeah. But we didn't never had a chance to speak properly about their release. So this is a kind mm -hmm. of, let's say, of a new interview kind of, because let's say to the people, if you want to know more your influences, we have uh, two interviews that can speak about, yeah. keep about that, go to check it out. We have, you released one year ago, Warlocks, I have to read it because it's, it's slow. Yeah. Warlocks, Grim and Withered Eggs. So, mm. this album, which which such a bit long name, <laughs> please explain mm. me the long name first. <laughs> it's just taken from a line in okay. um, a poem by Robert Burns, which is the oh. the the inspiration for the title track. Okay. Um, and I thought it was a cool, catchy um, title. Like I like the way it kind of rolls off the tongue. Um, yeah. It's a. Uh, yeah, I just thought it was a really cool name and it fit in with the themes. Um, it directly ties to one of the songs. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah, so, that's really it. <laughs> so we might say that in uh, this the last album, there is a, um, the, because of course it's a cultural and literal um, influences, 
because you mentioned a poet and a burn, so there is a, yet other influences in the lyric wise on the album. Yeah, yeah. So lyric lyrically, the album is uh, completely based on Scotland in some way. So every song is based on it. Scotland. Okay, tell me more. I mean, that's uh, so interesting. Yeah, it uh, whether it be yeah. I so I can't remember. Yeah, the last interview. Yeah, it wasn't uh, too long ago. So yeah, I'd already moved to the Highlands. So I moved to the Highlands, Scottish Highlands in... Um, yeah, I think it was around year. Aberdeen, something like that. I, w I was in Aberdeen, yeah. Yeah, Aberdeen, yeah. Um, but a couple of years ago, just at the start of the writing process for this album, I moved to the Highlands. And usually the... You know, I, I don't think I'm a person that's usually influenced by, like, my environment and stuff. Yeah. But I moved to the Highlands and, like, just being surrounded by, like all the mountains and the landscapes and all that kind of stuff it kind of yeah. inspired me to look into some like scottish history scottish um yeah. folklore and all that kind of stuff and i thought maybe i would have one or two songs you know yeah. based on that but yeah I, th there was so much to explore so much cool things so much things that fit in with the hell ripper aesthetic um so much interesting things to write about and yeah, I ended up with the whole album is based on Scotland in some in some form, you know, whether it be folklore or some poetry or uh, historical events and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, it was yeah. There's a it, the lyrics are a bit um, different to the previous albums, yeah. um, though it kind of explores similar themes just with a Scottish twist. You know, it's still dark. It's still yeah. Um, it's yeah. It's good. I mean, come on, it's uh, one of the most beautiful places. I mean, <laughs> I, I am a part because I, I'm a, I love Scotland. I can't do that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, words. Scotland <laughs> and Ireland are my favorite country, which are really close, by the way. But come on, living in the highland of Scotland, you're lacking us. That you're not <laughs> used to. I, I would live outside all the time, I'll pretend and just. And of course, because like, People are um, sometimes are really are unaware about uh, because you know there has always been this myth about Irish, let's say folklore, but Scotland has so much of folklore mm -hmm. and um, history, history that a lot of beautiful history about Scotland, mm -hmm. and uh, even even poet that even if just you mention a little bit in in the album, it's good to know and to listen and to f maybe people can I don't know, say wait. I'm going to dig more about that. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. A few people have yeah. told me they've kind of uh, looked yeah. into a bit more stuff just based on, you know, hearing the songs and the yeah. stories in the songs, which is really cool, you know, to turn people on to, like, uh, looking into, like, Scottish it's yeah. stuff. Um, but, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's really cool. And, yeah. and there's, yeah, been some, yeah. there's been some, I don't know, Writing during, let's say, the, the writing of this, um, of a uh, world of green and blah blah blah, which is too long. Can I say WG and WH? Yeah, I think that's even, I think that's even more complicated. <laughs> yeah, but I said that there was, you know, like some, I don't know, something about folklore about Scotland that, or history or something that you didn't know even about yourself. That you, when you find out, you were like, okay, I didn't knew it, even. Because of course, like maybe it was new. Because even for me, sometimes something from this city is new. Yeah, yeah. There was a few things, you know, that I wasn't aware of, or yeah, even, even most of the things I was um, either maybe aware of, but kind oh, of, yeah. you know, didn't know the details of, you know, like, and then you look into it and yeah, um, you find like yeah, there was a few like things such as yeah, um, uh. For example, yeah, the, the Curse of Carrying Crown is based on uh, the story of Sonny Bean, which is a story I was aware of um, yeah. for for ages. It's inspired loads of horror movies and stuff like uh, The Hills Have Eyes and stuff like that. But I looked more into it, you know, yeah, like just researching it. And yeah, I thought, yeah, this would make for some great Cannibal Corpse style lyrics. And yeah, um, yeah, yeah, it was... It was yeah, with, with your sound, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. There was a lot of yeah, yeah, a lot of like discovery, a lot of um, learning new things, and yeah, it was fun. Um, 
you know, kind of doing that to inspire yeah. myself as well for the lyrics. And it was good to write something different. Um, I still, like I said, I still explore the same kind of things. Yeah, that's, that's, the, that's past, the, the, the core is the one that's yeah. a, a reaper core. Yeah. That's founding changes, <laughs> you know, with the, with the, ears, yeah. the album, with the songs. Does this mm. time was more Scots based, let's say. Yeah. So it was so again it, yeah, so it's like a little bit different like yeah. from the usual Hellripper stuff. It's a bit different in terms of black speed, black thrash, like this style of music. Okay. You know, there's not uh, there's not much um yeah. exploration of like the Scottish folklore type stuff um in this style of music. Um mm. so it was cool to do that. It was cool to yeah do something a bit different but yeah it it's still like a, remains it's like a paying homage to your country work. you know it's like as well to pay homage to your own country as well it's some, i think it's important to never forget our own roots it's a yeah i mean yeah the main reason i did it was because it was interesting and um yeah, then, yeah, and of course, uh, yeah. Uh, since i know there are people uh that they really they might be like like you said they were they didn't know they were interested they maybe dig it more about uh, mm. scottish let's say uh, history or folklore if there is uh, uh maybe you while you were doing some research some i don't know book or something that you would for, for example suggest to them look just take a look to that maybe you can start from this and then you can move from another by yourself just place I mean, where to start yeah to be fair there's a, a book um it used to be in my used to be in here but i think it's in another room now i can't remember what it's Black. called but yeah it's it's a huge book um my partner got me um at the start of the writing process because i was like okay i was like yeah i'm researching this i'm doing all this i'm probably going to write about scotland and yeah she got me this book i can't remember what it's called it's something simple like you know just scottish folk tales or something i can't remember but there's a lot of stuff in there um but to be to be honest most of my research is done online you know i don't okay. um just going on through different like Ooh, articles okay. and uh historical thingies and all that kind of stuff um yeah i mean there's loads of stuff i mean you can um just get it on just type in you know like one of the, the song titles online or whatever the song yeah. is based on, okay. for example, the, the, yeah. Yeah, the Knuckle of E, um, the first track, or the, the Tale of Sonny Bean, or uh, the Stewer Worm, um, or just, Address. Just having that online, we can find the... Uh, yeah, there's so much, that, yeah. Yeah since, yeah. yeah, since they're either kind of like folk folklore and there's stories told about it, you know, you can find like accounts and different versions of stories and stuff online and... Beautiful kind of origins and stuff like that and um yeah you can see like the 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 poem address to the devil by robert burns which is wow. the, the which the title track is about um you can read that um yeah it's yeah loads of resources online of course that, um yeah that's a, yeah. i mean that's i think that's really in, in, important to to do because it's like uh, the italian an, an italian man would write about you know our own history and put their some internet of course I, I would say more like sicily let's say more sicily when you have more folklore because you know that the, the left forgot sometimes has more folklore than the, the most the, the, than the city bigger city itself mm. yeah yeah because like we are forgotten by everyone here so we have a lot of folklore a, a, a fucking a lot sometimes okay, I, yeah. you know, I don't know if, even myself about that even about, for example, many people are not aware that Aleister Crowley lived here. They had the okay. first, they had the first uh, um, Abbey Telema, the first, let's say, okay, yeah. Telema, uh, the Abbey that he built. It was his own house in the countryside here in Sicily. Okay. And all these pieces of this house were bought by rubber plant and black, um, black some other thing, but ma many by Led Zeppelin. So the house is ripped off by everything. Yeah. And all yeah, the painting yeah. inside. And uh, now it's destroyed, of course, as everything here yeah. left into abandoned places. That's uh, disgusting. How it's yeah. not many people knows about that, for example. Yeah. Well, he lived here as well. Well, not not here, but he was in Scotland. <laughs> I lost. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this very house he lived. Yeah. No, he was. <laughs> he lived in Scotland as well, and I think it was Jimmy Page um, uh, bought his house. Um, yeah. <laughs> we are we are surrounded by that. <laughs> 
<laughs> like he's going all around, like knocking at your door. Look, um, I'm Jimmy. This is a piece of the uh, crowding <laughs> room. Can I bought it? Like, well, <laughs> just do it. yeah. They they really they were really interested by him, of course, mm-hmm. and well, like some. So that and anyway, that's a lot of interest. Let's say um, mm-hmm. in any country, there are interesting to- uh, fairies, talks, tales, anything that sometimes people forget and i'm really glad about that what you did because really i think scotland has to be known more as a scotland itself like their own story because it's unique and it's beautiful i'm sorry mm-hmm. i will say all the time i'm sorry i have my 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 co-interviewer my friend she, mm-hmm. she's the irish side let's say so every time we have a fight i said no i'm so, so every time we have this fight yeah and then what we said okay next time do an interview with the james and uh, philip so you're gonna talk with philip i'm gonna talk with james bye <laughs> yeah <laughs> no, but speaking about that that's uh, that that that's what i mentioned before uh seeing you you and uh philip from gamma bomb together was really a mm. big pleasure because two people that i know and that i that really they have a big um like i can I say a big um highly way of seeing both of you that's was beautiful because they are gamma bomb it's they're amazing they are yeah. super humble as well as you so i mean how did you you just went on tour with them and you demand like from out of nowhere yeah i mean i mean i've i've always been a fan of gamma bomb since yeah. i got into metal I, t- I told philly and all the guys and joe and stuff mm. i told them you know i was i got into gamma bomb like i don't know when when i started getting into metal so like 20 not uh 2009 2010 and new and new influences were we add to the previous one yeah so i yeah so i loved gamma ball always yeah. you know um uh i and they were an influence on me yeah. getting into to thrash they were an influence on my musical taste they're an influence on my playing so i mean i've always been a fan of gamma bomb and then yeah we got um just a tour uh an offer to tour with them and that's my yeah, it was, it was cool in the UK. First time meeting them, and and now yeah, there are now there are the keepers, yeah. with the bot of the patch of gamma. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're the nicest guys ever. Really accommodating. That's really, amazing. yeah, really, yeah. Like I mean, I cannot, I can't say anything. I can't speak more highly of them. Like they're yeah, just the nicest. And I mean, one day um, you have to. Yeah. One day there will be amazing seeing you both of you do some collaboration together musically. Yeah, that I mean, yeah, be amazing. That would be amazing. And yeah, I've been. Yeah, I speak. I speak with Philly a lot, and yeah, yeah. he helped me like gave me some you know vocal tips and stuff, um, uh, warm up tips and all that. Um, yeah, yeah, and I, th- I mean, um, their their really their last album was yes, maybe maybe their best album. I think yes. I don't know. I think the it deepest. might be. The deepest yeah i think it's had. yeah yeah so i mean they're still releasing amazing music and that is yeah and i yeah i i cannot speak more highly of them there's nothing yeah, i think they deserve these and more and uh, seeing them after so many years and talking with them you know showing pictures and we were young even yeah. when we were like in our 20s uh that was you know, just kids, we were with them instead of just watching, just being there and um, seeing the concert. I don't know, there was, I think, Exodus, the overkill. We spent all the evening with the, with them, just uh, drinking <laughs> and having fun in the smoking area of the venue and taking stupid and hilarious picture that I, when I sent him, it was like, okay, I remember now. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> this shows how they were humble back then and they are, they are back now. They maybe they instead of just lying with them, just you know, resting as a band after the, the gig, they stay with the fun with us and just yeah. all the evening with us. And instead of watching, for example, Overkill and Exodus as well, that shows yeah. as well. And they deserve to be more see a new, and they are getting, I think, as well abroad, like yeah. as, um, as a big as a being known. Like in Canada, there are people saying Gamma Bomb is really good as well. Like you, yeah. because like right now, like I was telling you, James, since the beginning, I mean, uh, we did the first interview, the first, very first interview in 2020 or 2021, I think 2021 it was. And it was really the beginning. And I mean, you were speaking and I did the, I did it barely known you. And now everyone, to everyone that I'm speaking about, oh, do you know James? Why? Yeah. I mean, Oh, he's a ripper. Yeah, I know. Yeah. 
There is a guy from here that I think he had uh, he, he dreams about you. I don't know. <laughs> it's like you, you, you really created a cult, something like that. In a positive cult. I yeah, think. the goat cult. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, it's it's yeah, it's crazy. You know, what, like, what, what did you do with your music? I have no idea what happened. <clears throat> yeah, it's been crazy. Like I yeah. like I said, it's been it's been steadily growing. Yeah, each, with each release and with each year and stuff and um, being able to do more tours and play with bigger bands and stuff and play with some of my favorite bands and stuff like that. It's really cool and. Yeah, it's, I mean, yeah, I can't really, yeah, it's just been the Should last you, year, especially the, yeah. the the growth in the last year, like, is has been crazy since the last album. The last album got received well, which I'm very grateful for, and the growth and people supporting the band, I'm very, very grateful for, and it's yeah. been, it's been a crazy year, like, it's been non-stop yeah, all year, really, with, between the touring and all the other stuff, you know, like I still run the sto like the band camp page and stuff, so I still yeah. send all the orders and emails. Yeah, and because all, there is a lot as well about your merchandise. Stuff. You did all yeah. you did a lot and worked a lot with your own merchandise. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, still being involved in Yeah. So I mean nothing nothing has really changed on the on the on the on the like aspect. on that side, you know. Everything is almost everything is the same since twenty fifteen. Exactly. You know, I still use exactly. the same Except when you go in another country, yeah, you have like fan base everywhere now. Oh, yeah, it's everywhere. it's crazy. Yeah, going. Yeah, you know, it's yeah, just seeing people from other countries and stuff like showing an interest. It, it's it's amazing, and I'm very grateful I mean, for it. I mean, yeah, how, it's been, yeah. Yeah. How, how does it feel like really to be today? Because I, we can, I think we can say that to be. I mean, did you ever thought like like for example in 2017 the first album came out. To be like today because i think you are actually right now influencing the new musician the youngest musician so how does it feel to be like your the influence of someone else could you ever imagine something like that when you release like your first album or first ep demo or whatever when you took that your the guitar in your hand yeah and yeah not at all i mean it's yeah. it's it's crazy when anyone lists Hell Ripper as an influence or anything. I mean, it's, yes, yeah, I'm so grateful for that. It's, it's, yes, it's, it's amazing. Like, it's more, I mean, more than I ever expected. When I released the, the, the first EP, yeah. um, it was, it was just something I wanted to do as fun, really, just to, I thought maybe 10 people in my local scene in Aberdeen maybe would, would like the album, uh, the EP, and I thought, and that was all, you know, I had no goals to ever play live. I didn't even really plan an album. Yeah. It was really, I'm going to record these four songs, put it on YouTube, put it on Bandcamp, That's show the, show the local scene and maybe they'll like it. And then that was, that was it. It was it. So anything more than that is basically a bonus for me. And it's, yeah, but you, the fact that everything's growing is, is, I don't know how you arrived in 2020, 2019 here in Sicily, because back then back in the time i've been said here listen to that to this guy you have to interview it's a solo project he, do, he does everything you have to interview him <laughs> and, and that's how it started i was like uh, how, yeah. you, you i don't know because there, there is more one than one guy here and one fan i think you have more than one yeah i think yeah so i don't yeah. know how you got here in sicily because we have a weird metal scene here but yeah. that's a big trap yeah it's the it's the beauty of the internet i guess yeah. i mean spotify youtube yeah exactly Instagram, just all the social media yeah. stuff and you know that was that's a big thing was a big thing and it still is the yeah the big thing for hell ripper because like i said i never planned to play live so that was never really a a method of promotion even when we did play live up until 2020 uh yeah up until like 2021 yeah. or something we the maximum shows we played was like I can't remember, like maybe ten or fifteen in one year, which is it's like it's not much at all. So of course, we're not here, yeah. So and it was most like, up until like twenty nineteen or something. It was like ninety percent of the shows were in Scotland or yeah, whatever. I can't remember, but yeah, we it wasn't a live band, and yeah. So the most most the only way of promotion really was 
online, like yeah. Facebook, Instagram, all that yeah, kind of stuff. Yeah, you were doing a lot of lives as well, like to promote, yeah. playing, to promote, to connecting with people. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, that. I, yeah, I love doing the lives sometime. still. Yeah. I still do them, yeah, but oh. uh, yeah, since since we've been on tour and, and yeah. all that kind of stuff, I've I've had to kind of yeah. uh, not do that, and I yeah. and I haven't really played guitar in a while, other than kind of writing new stuff. Yeah. But usually, usually I go on the lives to kind of practice yeah. the set lists and uh, relearn my songs and stuff, so people get to come on, yeah. get to come <laughs> on and watch me struggle through my own songs and. No, nah, it is always it's cool, cool. Right? because you interact with your fans, with people, and talk with them. It's always a good thing. And that shows that, like, like I said, that you are always an, uh, an humble person and just fit grounded. That's most really important. Well, but, I mean, people, people like yeah. yourself spreading the word and the fat and people actually liking the music and showing an interest and yeah. supporting the band. I mean, that's why I'm a. That's how. That's how I'm able to do this. You know, so I deserve it. Um, it's good to speak. Like I like speaking to these these people, you know. It's sure, yeah, it's I, not any. It's not like a. It's not a difficult task for me. It's just, yeah. I'm very grateful for their support and. Yeah. Yeah. But I found that uh, I found that the actual release, uh, the actual date that you will have with Left to Die here in Italy. So just to say it, the exact same day, if someone is interested in Italy, is the 13th of August with the Left to Die. In uh, Torino at the Ziggy Ziggy Club, so Ziggy Club, yeah. it's already because it's uh, on your profile, so it's it's announced. So it's yeah. for everyone that wants to know more and maybe see closer that maybe in a festival a Reaper, I love to that as well. That is the Torino, which is an amazing period of the, but it's because it's full of festivals, so people are disappeared, so you can go yeah. to enjoy a concert in the venue without all the peace in the world. Okay, so. We can expect now, James. So live shows, of course, because it's a yeah, I'll read for typical now. We can expect live shows and yeah, uh, and loads. That hopefully in the twenty-five, maybe new music, new. I hope so. That's the goal. Okay. That's the goal. Um, yeah, I'm working on it now, so I'm hoping okay. twenty twenty-five, uh, probably later in twenty-five, if okay. if if it happens. I mean, yeah, I, I want to get out there as soon okay. as possible. But yeah, you know, yeah, like I say, loads of live shows coming up. We've got the summer yeah. tour, loads of summers, like almost every weekend, like yeah. for the rest of the year, we're doing like some sort of festival or something. So yeah, it's Maybe finding the time yeah. in between everything to yeah, to finish things. But uh, yeah, hopefully new music in 25, loads yeah. of live shows this year, loads of live shows in 2025 as well. There's um, Never gonna stop yeah. spreading the cult of the gold. No, exactly. Yeah, no <laughs> stopping. Yeah. Yeah, but what yeah. can I say, Jim? Of course, I mean, next time, I mean, uh, it's in August. It's August. It's like six months by now, kinda. We're gonna, we will do the interview in, in real time. We need, but come yeah. on, the fourth interview still on Zoom. We have to evolve, yeah. and I yeah. have to, and I will bring Canoli. So this time it's gonna be different. Of course. So yeah. and. Saying thank you as always. Enjoy the uh, amazing Highlands in Scotland, and um, enjoy your places because you live in a fucking paradise. And maybe who knows, <laughs> one day I can finally be able to visit so Scotland. <laughs> I have yeah. everything. I have every city planned in my mind. Every place I want to go. Yeah, right now, I mean, you can't even see anything. It's just full of rain and mist and clouds and stuff. But uh, geez. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and say hi to the to the lock. There. <laughs> Thank you so me. much. I mean, I like the like in general. Every type of lock, lock that is there. Mm. Thank you so much, and have a beautiful rest of the day, of evening, because it's evening now, there. And uh, see you in August. Yeah, see you. August. August. Yeah. Let's let's manifest it. <laughs> you know. Yes. See you very soon. Bye, James. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Bye, James.